would like to introduce um, three fabulous women from uh, Mundelein High School. It's Susan Feltz, Lisa Johnson, and Mary Edley Allen. And they're going to share what they're doing at their program. And then following that, we're going to hear from Monica Foster from John Woods Community College. So um, Mundelein ladies, I'll let you take it away. Okay, thank you so much. And we're, we're pleased to be here to share with, with all of you something we found in partnering with a local business that was successful and um, has met the needs of a business, our program, and adult education learners. And I'd also like to recognize at this point um, our administrative assistant, Yuli Cordova, who in the initial stages helped us put together this program just by going out in the public and um, researching businesses in the local area. So uh, we first made a list of manufacturing and landscaping businesses in our APC area and came up with a list of two businesses. Currently, we are partnered with Rupert Company, a division of Kilcoy, Kilcoy Global Foods. It is a meat processing, packaging, and distribution manufacturing company. Um, at the time that we began to talk to them, um, they had about 450 employees. Now looking post-pandemic to approach about 600 employees. So that's, that's a little background to where we'll be going in this conversation. Um, Lupe, or uh, rather Juliana, generated a list of manufacturing and landscaping businesses in our APC area, which in, in this area that we're located is quite extensive. We are in a, a very commercial area, a lot of manufacturers, a lot of businesses, and a lot of landscapers. We also, at that point, identified students enrolled in our adult ed program who were beginning literacy and also worked at some of these local businesses. This triggered the thought that we could perhaps partner with a business either on site at their, at their um, place of business or with some of our classes. We're located in 11 different areas of, of Lake County and we could easily absorb people into our classes or work on site with them. We narrowed the list of potential partners to two businesses that met the profile we felt that we could, we could serve. Um, it was numbers that we would get a, a sizable number of students. We didn't want a class of five or six students and we didn't need a class of 30. We wanted this to be a pilot program, um, a reasonable amount of students between um, 15 and 20 students in a class and something that was manageable that we could keep in contact with the business regularly to see how it progressed. We also um, plan to contact the two businesses during the second quarter of the year. That was, the thought was we are registering students in the first quarter, we were testing students, we were placing in our regular classes. The second quarter, being just a, not necessarily slower, but having more time, we felt was the perfect time to start to engage with a business. So in that second quarter, we contacted Rupert Company and spoke with a couple of their HR directors and requested a personal meeting just to talk to them about what we do, um, how we function, where we're located, and what our outcomes look like. Um, three of us from MHS, that would be Juliana and Lisa and I, met with Rupert HR directors just for a face-to-face -face conversation. Um, there were introductions, and they were gracious enough to have us tour the plant facility. Even though it's in Mundelein, we've worked in Mundelein, lived in Mundelein for many years, had absolutely no idea the, the massive spats that this plant took up, the number of employees, and the actual, the actual work that they did. Um, 
in walking through the plant, we saw students that we recognized from our program and felt this was a great potential opportunity for us. Um, we did share program information. We sat down and described in more detail actually what we do, how we do it, materials that we have, online tools that are used, um, things that these students would have available to them if we were able to work with, with Rupert in a partnership. We also discussed the value of incentivizing employees. And this was one thing that from the outset, we felt if we could partner with a business and the business could incentivize their employees in whatever way they felt possible, if it's gift cards, a, a meatpacking plant, food, if it's a day off every month, um, whatever they would say would, would be a value added to their employees and not an encumbrance to them. We felt an incentive from the business trusting the students would come to an English class could, could make a great marriage between their business and us. Okay, then that quarter ended. We did know from our first conversation that they would be very busy. It was their year end, November and December. It was our semester end. And we respected that any partnership that you embark on, it, you've got to understand you're walking into their home. And um, we were respectful of that. We respected their time. We respected they were coming out of the pandemic just as we were. Um, we also respected that as wages were growing in all of the industries, the local industries, their turnover was dramatic. It was they had described it as a revolving door of employees coming in and going out. As their business was expanding, um, they were desperately in need of employees. So we, we did let the end of that second quarter fade and waited to contact them um, in January. And we requested a second meeting just to discuss any possibilities of working with them. And what we saw reflecting back on our tour of the plant and we then had data from our own first semester in our other sites. So the scheduled meeting, on the second meeting, we did actually bring core materials, books, supplemental materials, lists of class sites, and schedules. We had data from years before, and we each had a folder to leave with both HR directors um, with our own personal information. It's a little more extensive than that first face-to-face -face contact. And it did show them in it with the hardcore materials exactly what we have and how we use them. At one point, um, I, I will name him Ryan Clatt, one of the HR uh, directors, put his hands on his desk and said, so bottom line, what is this going to cost us? For us, this was a watershed moment. And it was the beginning of a great relationship we had in collaboration with Rupert. We had never considered, um, we just neglected to say, this is all free. This is supported by the grants that we write. This is, we're part of the Workforce Investment Opportunity Act. There is no cost to Rupert. There's no cost to the employees. They, they did not have to supply the instructor. This was absolutely free and we hoped extremely beneficial to all. I, in, in other businesses in which I've been involved, the saying was always, it's a great partnership when there's a win-win. And we felt this was really the, the trifecta. It would be a win for Rupert, it would be a win for Mundelein High School, and it would be a win for the adults learning English. Um, we discussed logistics of class sites and decided that a two hour session, two or, or two and a half, whatever, whatever would fit into the work schedules, meeting it twice a week on the Rupert site would be ideal. Um, the, the people were working 
it's shift work. So a seven to three shift could work in an English class from three to five. Rupert would provide the site, which was actually the site that they trained people for their employment. Um, that was decided that after, after work was ideal, they didn't go home, they didn't have to come back. It eliminated some of the barriers that we find continuing today. We find having people come to classes at night, they've gone home, they have families at home, they have children at home, they have meals to cook, and they're tired. So we felt working from, from post shift work, three to five, three to 5.30, a couple of hours a day, um, that would be ideal. And Rupert was gracious enough to offer the site, all the electronics were, were provided. We just needed to provide the instructor. Rupert advertised the classes, designed and distributed a sign-up sheet and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there were, um, there, there could have been 60, Lisa? Yes, somewhere, somewhere, between 50 and 60. somewhere between 50 and 60 people immediately signed up for the possibility of joining this class. Um, at the very, very, at the very beginning, we looked at um, where the people worked and that made a difference to Ruprecht in pulling people a little bit early off of, off of a line or people who worked a little bit later, um, they, they resolved 35 beginning literacy students were um, eligible to be tested and selected to be enrolled in the class. So at one point, five of us went on one day and uh, sat, interviewed the 35 students. We tested them on site and then met with Rupert again to say, here are the results. We, we delineated the students by beginning literacy, high beginning, and a couple, even a couple of advanced students had enrolled and asked for a chance to be eligible. And together with, with our expertise and, and the judgment of the Rupert employees, we chose 14 beginning literacy students to pilot this, this partnership. Rupert then at that point said that they were willing to offer a financial incentive to students who would complete, who would come to the class two days a week, two hours each day and complete the class and be post-tested. Their financial um, incentive was to pay them their hourly wage for each hour that they attended, which was, was very gracious, we thought. Class met at the end of the workshop, Tuesdays and Thursdays from three to five. And the class was held from March 15th to June 30th, which gave um, sufficient time for 40 hours needed to post test. And we did all kind of hold our breath saying, we, we made no promises, but we had some assurances. And we were excited embarking on this. Rupert was excited. We we're just a little nervous for the outcome. There was near perfect attendance for 14 out of 14 students. I believe there were only two students that missed, is that correct, Lisa? Two students missed a day, maybe, maybe two days of absence. We post-tested. Two of the 14 students increased overall scale scores. 12 of the 14 students achieved at least one NRS level gain, some two. One of those students actually in this interim did get an advancement in, in his job placement. He was, he was promoted to a, a, a higher level job. Um, it, it was thrilling. That was a, a thrilling moment for us. And now you can see all students um, received financial compensation from actually the Ruprecht um, Chief Operating Officer, Stephen Porter, came with a check in an envelope for each of the students who had attended the class, each of 14. Um, in the picture, you see one of the students with Stephen. 
Um, on the far right is Lupe Rosnowski, the instructor. And the gracious lady in red is State Illinois State Senator Adrian Johnson, who came for that final ceremony, awarded each student with their name and with the Illinois insignia, a state of Illinois accomplishment of achievement, as did we. We have each year at the end of our years, we give um, a certificate of achievement. We give awards for um, participation, perfect attendance, good attendance. We had each of those for the students as well. So you can see the, the little gal in the middle with her certificates and I think perhaps her employment, her compensation tucked away somewhere. And there's Lupe, the instructor. There you see the class um, waiting for her to present certificates on the left and on the right. A, a, comp, a complete composite of Rupert employees, um, the administrators, the HR directors, um, everyone who was present before Ruprecht awarded them a celebration. They had cake and drinks and, and um, it, was, it was festive. One thing that was mentioned that was so touching to us and even to that operating officer, he, he was really emotional with it. Many of these people have never received a certificate of accomplishment in school. So they had, they had our certificates very impressively from Senator Johnson. They had something from the state of Illinois with a government insignia with their names printed on it that said they had accomplished this. So it, was, it was a marvelous day. And in the end we have from Senator Johnson, um, a, a note that she sent to us, individuals, who prioritize the time to learn English while living, working, and raising a family in America have better opportunities for job training and therefore an improved quality of life. The Mundelein High School Adult Education Department is a blessing in our community, and this literacy program will continue to make a significant difference to immigrant families who call our area home. That, that qualified us as that we've done what we intended to do. It, I, Mary will say, it filled our buckets. And this did indeed support you know, from, from someone that really spent her time that she busy with, with campaign strategies and other things, spent her time to come recognize us and recognize these people. Uh, we know this is, this is value. And we hope what we've done we can support any other program who wants to start something like this. It's work. It was hand-holding. We, we met with Rupert people frequently. We visited the classrooms very often. Um, we worked individually. I, I helped, and I know um, Lisa helped individual students struggling to read. It, the, the value to us was, was just incredible. And again, I say, um, it was the trifecta, three parties won, and it was it was a beautiful experience. They continue now; they're they're in class now. There was not a turnover for most of these people. They all retained their position. They've gotten increased um, wages. They have some have gotten different positions, and Rupert is now encouraging the people to continue with English class. They they feel the value. So we thank you for letting us present this and hope that our experience can trigger something in other programs to do the same. Well, Susan and Mary and Lisa, we just thank you so much for um, sharing this information. Very, I agree, it's very inspiring. We're seeing that in the chat. Does uh, Before we um, hear from Monica, does anybody have any questions for this group? Um, encouraging and inspiring, great program. So thank you very much. Um, yeah, there, here's one question for, for all of you. What are the, your future plans for this program model? And do you hope to reach out to additional employers? Great question. Yes, we're in the process right now. We're kind of feeling that 
even though we weren't experienced in it, it we're naive with a lot of the things, um, the accidents worked. It was the right timing. Right now is the right time to reach out to employers, to talk to them, to just do the initial presentations. The second, the beginning of the second semester was the perfect time to come and say, here's what we can do. Um, probably now in the initial stages, we will say right out of the gate, there is no expense to you. There's no cost to you. We had failed to do that. It's, it's that naivety and thinking, oh, certainly they would know that. Um, we, we, don't, we won't assume that. We won't barrel in with all of our materials. We will do very much the same. We will go introduce ourselves, talk about the program, ask them to meet again in January. And we felt that having that, that in, incorporated in March to June fit perfectly. And those people segued right into the program now. So now I think there are 12 or 14 people again in the class at Rupert. And I said, they retained their positions. They weren't in that revolving door. So we, we have a couple of other, um, a manufacturing plant and landscaping that we're looking at right now and have made contact with one business. We're making a contact with the second business. And um, landscaping is, is a great opportunity, but many of those people leave in the winter or the people who stay, then they start landscaping again in March. So that we would have to watch the time, the time element. We do have two other manufacturing facilities that we're looking at right now. That's awesome. And so Megan does respond to your um, comments, uh, Susan. Employers are hungry for ways to keep their current employees engaged. And we're seeing an increasing number of local employers contacting us to request similar on-site classes. So we're excited to hear that. And thank you for sharing your um, wonderful. Your uh, experiences, because I think that's really helpful. And Sue asked, did the company consider expanding the program for more students? Yes, yes, they would be happy to do that. The, the only difficulty right now is changing in shift times. Some people are getting out a little bit earlier, some later. Um, and having on that site, as massive as the plant is, there aren't a lot of spare rooms. So yes, they would happily have um, have extra classes. All right, great. Again, thank you very much for sharing this information and um, educating us and inspiring us. That's always a good mix. Um, now we're gonna switch over to our second program from another part of the state, Monica Foster. Um, so Monica, do you want to bring up your slides? Yes, I'm gonna try this here. All right. Is it on? Can you? It you sure see? is. Okay. All Give right. yourself a you know, high five. A on, perfect yeah. thing. Because yes, this is a uh, new to me. Okay. Well, I would um, like to introduce myself. I'm Monica Foster. I am the manager of the adult education program at John Wood Community College. And I've been, um, been here for the past 12 years. And I too want to say that was an inspiring um, story to, to hear how well they have done. Um, uh, we um, also have a partnership and, and it's a little bit different how, how um, we came into being. Um, but as we have seen fewer students attending classes, we are looking at new ways to meet the new needs of communities in our districts, as well as serving more students in our program. And we do think that one of the ways to do this is by connecting and partnering with local employers. Um, John Wood Community College and Dot Foods um, have had an on-site learning uh, for the last five years. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how we developed that and how we sustain that partnership as we work together to help them retain employees and help their employees succeed on the job and advance in their careers with the company. Okay, I've got a clicker, but it doesn't seem to be working. So. Okay, sir, I am having difficulty advancing my slides. Let's see. Do you, do you want me to switch over? 
Yes, would you mind? Sure, just go ahead and stop share. Okay. Here you go. Okay, okay. So Dot Foods um, is the largest food redistributor in North America. And they, as the second bullet point says, they distribute uh, food service, convenience, retail, and vending products to just dis two distributors then in all 50 states and more than 55 countries. So they, um, their company is in the very small town of Mount Sterling, Illinois, which has a population of 2,026. So they really are a very large company in a very small community. Um, they, uh, to meet their workforce needs, the employees come from all around the area and they often drive um, 20 to 40 miles to work and back each day. Next slide. John Wood Community College is a small college in a large rural district. And we are located about 40 miles from Mount Sterling. About six years ago, our college workforce staff met with staff from Dot Foods regarding how the college might be able to uh, provide customized training and meet their uh, training needs. And that's when they learned that the company was hiring many workers with limited English skills. And the company asked for assistance in helping the employees learn English to help them be successful on the job. Next slide. So that's when the, uh, we developed the partnership with Dot Foods and Adult Education. The college workforce staff reached out to myself and the adult education program to see what resources our program could provide to the DOT employees. We had initial meetings that were held with DOT staff um, to help our staff learn about DOT as a company, what the job duties were, what resources were available to employees. The lead staff from DOT were from the Center for um, Career Development. Adult ed staff provided information on our classes and the resources we could provide, as well as what our grant requirements were and what our procedures and outcomes were. With the class development, it became important that DOT shift managers um, had a voice in setting meeting times for the classes. Um, in, DOT employees are encouraged to volunteer and um, they anticipated that some would be interested in volunteering with this um, program. And so uh, they had a role in there. And then certainly our ESL instructors, we wanted to include them as we uh, put this partnership together. DOT also uh, provides translators for new student orientation sessions, uh, which helps the students, which is where we, so they help the students complete their enrollment forms and their assessments. And so throughout this partnership, um, these past few years, we have continued to have an identified staff member with DOT. It's been the same person all of this time as our primary contact. And I think that has really helped us to sustain um, this partnership. The DOT Foods Operations Support Manager really coordinates things with the shift managers. And um, the communication is really vital. And I think that's really helped that we've had that in place. In order to get classes started there, um, it was, uh, we really had to plan class meeting times that would work with employee schedules. And that was challenging and we had to be strategic about that. Um, just as the other last presentation said, um, we were dealing with many different shifts. Um, DOT has 2,500 employees at their headquarters there in Mount Sterling. They have, they operate 24 hours a day, seven days a week with work shifts varying in number of hours and the number of days of week. Some people work only uh, weekends, some work um, four days a week, some work 12 hour shifts, some work seven hour shifts. It's just a, a wide variety. So we needed to include the um, shift managers to really determine how we might be able to fit this in. And it was decided for our classes as well that we would meet two days a week on Monday and Thursdays 
from five o'clock to seven o'clock p.m. Um, and since DOT is a redistributor of um, uh, food service items, we were able to provide snacks for students during that class time. But these hours allow students to attend class when they get off shift, or for those who are working a night shift, um, which starts at seven, to be able to come in prior to their shift. And since so many of the um, employees are driving in from quite a distance, um, this way they can attend the class uh, right um, at the same time they're, that they're driving there for their um, shift work. Um, now, if there's cases where the class interferes with an employee's um, uh, scheduled time to work, the shift managers, they value the program and, and they will work with that employee to be able to make up that time um, so that they can still uh, get their hours in. Um, since we had many students in the class that live outside of our John Wood College District, we did need to um, consult with ICCB to determine if we were going to be able to provide, um, to be able to serve these students. And um, so the determination made, was made that um, since the employer is in our college district, the employees would be able to be enrolled as students in our program. We do provide our students with a list of the um, ESL classes that are in the area, their home areas so that um, their family members can take classes as they, if they choose to. Uh, next slide, please. We then, um, we had our class uh, days and times and we needed to look at the curriculum. And we had some materials that um, we also brought in and said these, Seemed like these would be helpful things to use. And um, what was helpful is that their man shift managers would reviewed our on-the-job English and key vocabulary. And they looked through those books and then they provided um, updates with company-specific uh, procedures and um, um, processes that would be uh, help the uh, students really relate and learn English that they were needed for their job. They also provided us with um, a list of key vocabulary that was necessary for uh, the warehouse that um, employees would need to learn quickly. They would see it often and it would be uh, vital for them to learn that for their jobs. And they provided us with a video of uh, the warehouse and um, the signage and processes that would be used there. So. Um, that was a way for students to really be able to relate what they were learning in class to their work situation. Next. And then we needed to recruit the students. Um, the students in their classes um, are French speaking and Spanish speaking. So uh, we did have the translators there at DOT uh, did make flyers in, in all the different languages. And these are um, posted on bulletin boards and TV screens throughout the company. And shift managers uh, talk about when new classes are starting and um, make sure that, that all are aware of that. Uh, the classes are talked about in the company newsletter. So we really do, uh, and DOT really does try to make a, uh, a concerted effort to get the word out. Um, as I said before, the warehouse managers are involved in the recruiting process because that way they can provide the flexibility needed for students who um, may need to miss a portion of their work hours to be able to take the class. And then we also have an option for workers who uh, may not be scheduled to work a particular day, a class day, that they could zoom into the class. Um, next. So we've probably served over 40 employees that have participated in the classes over the past five years. Um, our average class size is about eight students, eight to 10. Um, and we have, um, the, the students do appreciate the classes and here are some of the comments that they shared with our current instructor. Um, and they said that having the class at DOT takes a trip out of their day. So they can come to class directly from work or when they come to work without having additional travel time to go to and from class. 
So location was definitely an advantage. And they also felt that the schedule is a huge advantage. Um, having class start at the end of the shift or at the start of a shift for night employees um, was very helpful. If the class time um, is during their work hours, they appreciated that there was flexibility to make up that time. And then our instructor, um, also uh, his perspective, in, in the instructor for this class um, this year is actually a John Wood Community College philosophy instructor, but he also worked at Dot Foods for um, several years and he continues to work one weekend a month um, to be able to just uh, keep a hand in that. So he is well aware of the processes and um, um, how Dot works and has been, um, that's been a really uh, positive thing for us to have uh, with that. And his perspective on this is that the meeting rooms um, at DOT have all of the same resources that our classrooms have at John Wood. Um, he can project from a computer to a big screen TV or a projector. They also have whiteboards in every room. And if students have questions about their work environment or words that are used in their workplace that they don't understand, they can go directly to those areas um, on site to talk through those questions. As a warehouse and trucking company, DOT has its own language that can be especially difficult for ESL students or anyone new to the industry. Um, next slide. Um, several students have been promoted to other positions um, within the company. And Sergio is one of those students. Now, Sergio continues to come to class. However, he was not at class the night that they did take this picture. But this is Sergio's story. He came to the United States from Colombia about three years ago, and he started at DOT shortly after arriving. At that time, he spoke very little English and had trouble understanding what was being said when somebody was speaking. He could read some English, but his previous customer service job in Colombia didn't use English at all. About a year um, after his time at, he started at DOT, he started taking the English classes through John Wood. And around that same time, he applied for an entry-level leadership position. His supervisor shared with Sergio that his English would need to improve before he'd be able to advance to the next level. So Sergio used that feedback from his supervisor as motivation to focus on his English. After a year, he was able to go to the doctor by himself. He was comfortable ordering food in restaurants. And when another entry-level leadership position became available over the summer, he applied and was hired. So Sergio plans to continue coming to class to continue to improve his English, but his next goal is to prepare for his citizenship test. Sergio shares that the biggest advantage to having the class at Dot Food is the schedule. Another community college um, that is closer to his hometown offers ESL classes, but those classes are offered early in the morning when he's sleeping or later in the evening during his shift. So he has found this to be um, uh, the best way for him to attend those classes. Next. So our next steps with DOT, um, we have developed a logistics ICAPS and we have begun to uh, have discussions uh, with our liaison at DOT to offer this to our ESL students and to other eligible DOT employees to provide them with an opportunity to earn two industry recognized credentials and a pathway to job promotion. Next. And the next steps for John Wood. Um, during the past year, we partnered with another employer in our district, Mashoffs, which is a pork producing company located in Pittsfield, which is another small town in our district. Many of their workers are native Spanish speakers and they are wanting to learn or improve their English. So we began an ESL class at the John Wood Center in Pittsfield um, in January of this past year. And we had 20 students who enrolled in that class. And although that is not located on site at the workplace, our classroom is literally just down the street from um, Mashoff's office building. And um, we partner with the company for student recruitment, 
and we worked with them to identify the best class meeting times uh, as well. Um, we are going to continue to look for new employers to partner with, with, to partner with for both our ESL and our ABE and GED classes. And one of the ways that we look to find these opportunities is through our um, uh, local workforce innovation board. As the um, adult rep to the board, I often hear of the needs that employers have um, at those meetings. And um, as well as it gives me an opportunity to provide to those employers what services the adult education programs in our uh, workforce region can provide to those employers. We also continue to work closely with our college workforce training staff. So they are um, well aware of the continued services that we offer so that as they are working with employers and hearing about uh, training needs or needs of employers, they can um, uh, make that connection. And then the um, Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act business services team, um, I think is also a way to access um, employer needs and program services. So that um, and it's our program in a nutshell and I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone may have. Monica, thank you so much. That was um, another inspiring um, presentation. We really appreciate you sharing the process of how you went through this relationship. Um, a couple of questions. One is, could you repeat who created the flyers? Was it John Wood or Dot? Okay, uh, John Wood, actually our, our PR department at the college um, created the, fly the flyers. We sent those over to Dot. They translated them for us um, and, and then put them the advertisement out for them. All right, great. So more partnering. Yeah. Um, and then another question is, is the class multi-level or do you screen employees and only include a targeted level of English ability? You know, our class is multi-level and that's why it can be helpful when we do have some volunteers that can assist one group while another group is working um, with the instructor and that type of thing. And it's, it, it might also be helpful that we, it's a smaller class as well, but it is multi-level. All right, thank you. That's all the questions in the chat right now, but uh, we do have a little more time. So if anybody has an additional question, please put it in or um, at this point, since our presenters have shared their information, if you'd like to unmute. Okay, one more question. Um, is it hard to find ESL teachers to work, to teach shift work? I can speak to that for from our aspect. And um, the answer is, Yes, especially for us, I think we are very uh, rural area. Um, so it, it was it was difficult and that's why we had to start our um, our ESL class with in Pittsfield a little later this year because we had to find an ESL instructor. And that's why I feel really fortunate that our instructor at DOT, um, he knows about shift work and he knows um, how that works. So he's been, uh, uh, really helpful and that we, I feel really fortunate to have that. All right, and here um, is not a question, but it wouldn't be um, an ICCB adult ed sponsored event in any way if we didn't have Dr. Kathy Olson Tracy saying, please remember to capture all of this in DAISY. So I think um, that's, that's great. Um, we appreciate that. And um, I know there's gonna be some additional training coming up in the near future from ICCB on like some of uh, thinking about all of that and the MSGs and different ways to capture uh, progress. And Susan says, great presentation. I'm in many ways similar to their partnership there that they have, and thank you, Monica. And, and I just wanna say, and, and feel free to continue to put questions in, but I just wanna mention to everybody that um, I thank you so much to all of these women for not only the extremely valuable work that they have done to, um, you know, to create and implement these programs and to help so many of our learners in Illinois, but also their willingness to share with the field. They're incredibly busy. And um, that's one of the things I love about adult ed is, you know, they almost any time that I ask, people just say yes. And they say yes, they actually tell me why they say yes. They say yes, because they know that it's going to be value added 
for others in the field. And so I just want to say thank you for taking the time to share. And um, Michelle's asking, will the PowerPoints be available? And yes, actually, we posted them right at um, two. So Kirsten, would you mind po um, posting both of the PowerPoints in the chat? They also will be on the website as well. Um, yeah, and Kirsten's going to do that for us in just one second. And we appreciate um, her support. So anybody else, again, more great presentation. Thank you for sharing. Um, any other, there we go. Here come the PowerPoints. So thank you very much for that. Um, I will mention as we're waiting to see if there's any more questions, our closing session will be at 3.15 today. That's a little bit different. You're only getting a little shorter break, but we're gonna wrap up by four o'clock. We're going to have um, Whitney Thompson and Angela Gerberding from ICCB. We'll be talking about ability to benefit state plan. So we'll wait just another couple minutes and see if we have any additional questions before we finish up here. Yes, and Megan says, but thank you, very inspiring presentation. Um, I just wanna say again, thank you to the, all of these four fabulous women and also to all of our presenters that we've had all day. This has been a great sharing of resources. And I remember all of these sessions are recorded and they will be on um, the Transitions Academy page of the ICAPS website. Yeah, and... Oh, yeah. If, yeah. Um, yeah. If you could add just one more time about the flyers. Yeah, I'm, I'm seeing through. that question about who created the flyers. The flyers were created by John Wood through our marketing department at the college, um, but they were translated into the other languages um, by Dot. All right, everyone, thank you so much. You have a few extra minutes to check those emails before our 315 session. Um, again, thank you very much, all of you for, for sharing today and for everybody for attending. Thank you.